Hi, and welcome to the show. Well, today I have with me a mental health therapist, Paige Matthews. Paige, thanks so much for being here. And you're here to talk to us about LGBTQ matters here in Yamhill County, right? Mm -hmm. And you've had a long history that brought you to this, but let's back up a little bit and talk about uh, maybe what you were like in high school. What, were, you in the, were you in the band? Were you an art major? What, what, what went on? You know, I was actually a journalism nerd. I really liked to write opinion articles and tell, you know, the whole school my feelings about everything. <laughs> okay, so you were out for uh, creating justice from the beginning, huh? <laughs> it's true. Telling my opinion, whether or not people wanted to hear it, just getting it out there, so. Yeah. Well, and then at some point in your life, you decided you wanted to be a mental health therapist and you had a special um, outreach for LGBTQ people. How did that how did that happen? You know, I worked in a corporate industry for years and years and years. And one day I just woke up and like a light bulb realized my community, my LGBTQ community is hurting really badly, especially out in rural areas. I was living in Bend at the time. And I, I couldn't live another day without fighting for justice for my community. So I went to grad school out in Bend, and here I am as a therapist. Wow. All right. Well, you know, we, we've had a conversation just going between you and I for the last few months and about having you on the show. And that started um, long before anybody heard of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of brought some problems to a head right now. Is that right? Tell us about that. Yeah, you know, the thing that I am seeing all the time as a therapist and the thing that I care the most right about right now is we have so many LGBTQ kids now trapped in homes where um, the environment might not be safe for these kids to live in. So especially in rural areas, we already had LGBTQ kids struggling and isolated away from supports that we see in Newburgh and Portland and McMinnville, and now they can't even leave the house and things are pretty bad. So when this it's not supportive, they don't have a place they can go to school, for example, and be around supportive friends. So home environments are harsh because the people we're with that they're with don't accept them for who they are. Is that the basic one? Yeah, yeah. LGBTQ kids especially, but also adults face so much family rejection, not just in rural areas, in urban ones too. And, you know, a lot of times kids feel the only thing they can do is go online and look for support or play video games. And that's usually their only escape. And then they spend the rest of their lives just kind of cooped up with a family who doesn't think they're valid, won't use their correct name or pronouns, tells them, you know, you're not real, your experience isn't real. Um, sometimes in, in our more, in the, the more awful situations, we have parents telling kids that they're worthless and that they, you know, don't deserve to exist. So we see a wide range of uh, family rejection issues. Now, in, in your work, you are probably not meeting with people one-on-one -on -one now. Is that true or not? Yeah, we're doing a phone and video sessions these days. Yeah. And what are you, what are you hearing? What are you, how are you helping people? I mean, you're hearing the things you just were telling us, but mm -hmm. what kind of maybe coping skills are you helping people with? You know, the, the main thing, unfortunately, that I'm hearing right now is people saying things like, why am I alive? Why should I live being trapped in this environment? This whole COVID thing is showing me what my life is really like. Um, why am I here? And so the main thing that we want to do is help these folks create a life worth living, even when everything looks bleak. So right now, the uh, situation looks bleak for a lot of people. And the thing that we've come up with for these folks to do, especially isolated LGBTQ folks, is just to go full online support. So there's a place called uh, Trevor Project Online. They have online groups. Um, Together Works in McMinnville, they're generally a trans support group. They have a food pantry right now, uh, the second and fourth Mondays. So they still have some in-person support. Uh, the issue is how can we help folks get to these kinds of places? but it's really nice that they still exist. Yeah, I have heard about that food pantry. What was that again? That's um, second and fourth? 
second and fourth Mondays from 7 to 9 p.m. Yeah, and they have unlimited amounts of food and they're practicing social distancing and have folks wear masks. And it's so nice that they're here to, st to serve our most vulnerable members of our community, despite what's right. going on. Yeah, uh, the, for in the First Baptist room, uh, excuse me, at the Fireside Room in the First Baptist Church. Yeah. Yeah, okay, well, that is a resource. Tell me more about the online support. So the Trevor Project, so you're an LGBTQ kid that needs support. You, you Google Trevor and you don't know whether it's .com or .org and a project, right? Mm -hmm. Trevor project. project, yeah. And what happens when you get online? There's online chats, there's groups on there. And one of the biggest things is they also have a crisis line. So folks can talk to people right away if they feel like they wanna die or if they're feeling totally hopeless. Trevor Project has a really good um, crisis line built in, but there's so much online support in there. And then, of course, out here in Yamhill County, we have a lot of folks who don't have internet access, and a lot of the places they access internet have been shut down, like the library. Um, and so we really encourage folks to go online and see where they can get free internet right now because of what's going on to help them access those resources online. How about in Yamhill and McMinnville, Yamhill County and McMinnville, where is, where can you go for inter, for wireless, for internet? I, I, I have yet to find that answer. I'm just um, encouraging folks to go look online with Xfinity and Comcast and all of the, the free internet options. I know they've opened up their hotspots and so, okay, uh, yeah. All right. So you're talking to someone and you're often on a Zoom call just like this, is that right? Mm -hmm. Totally, yeah. And you've got a lot of responsibility there. I mean, you're looking at this person thinking, how can I help them? Um, what, what are some coping skills when someone says, boy, I just don't wanna live? Do you start asking questions or do you just say, I hear you, tell me more, or how does it go? Yeah, I hear you tell me more is a super, <laughs> you could be a therapist, that's a super good thing to say. <laughs> um, right now, you know, usually when COVID's not happening, we look toward external coping skills, like how can we get you to a support group in Portland? How can we get you to a clothing closet in Portland? How can we get you to a support group in Newburgh? But without those, you know, we really have to change what coping skills look like. So sometimes it might just be like, hey, you don't want to be alive because you're trapped with this family who makes you feel worthless. How can you distract yourself? So that's one of the first places we go is, you know what, right now it's totally okay to play video games and it's totally okay to play them a little bit more than normal. Um, whatever you can do to distract yourself from the home situation. And then the other part sometimes is just being a source of connection to community for these folks. Like, Hey, I'm queer, I'm a therapist, we're in the same community, and I can be your connection to that community for right now. And sometimes I'll call folks once a day and just let uh -huh. them know that their community is out there caring about them and witnessing them right now. So you're mostly working from home and taking a lot of calls. You have a list of people that you're concerned about and more people are, are seeking you out. Yeah. So you're, you're not really taking it easy right now. Is that fair to say? <laughs> no, all these people that say they're bored, I don't understand. Um, yeah. You know, it seems that we're preparing for lots more calls moving forward here too. But, you know, the good thing about folks in Yamhill County is generally people who live out in rural areas are already pretty good at being isolated. So I'm not super mm. worried like suddenly folks are... Um, isolated in ways they've never experienced. The, the calls that I'm more getting is like, oh, not only am I isolated, but I can't leave if I want to. Um, and that's really kind of the trap that people are in right now that they're calling about. Well, we talked about a couple of um, resources, the uh, Together Works group at First Baptist. You talked about the Trevor Project online. Any other, what other resources perhaps? Yeah, you know, PFLAG Newburgh is great. They're generally an in-person support group, LGBTQ folks in Newburgh, and they are working on making their services digital. And so their website, which is pflagnewburgh.org, they would be really good people to contact for virtual support options. And then definitely to go attend in-person once this whole thing is over with. 
Um, we also, I mean, we have the basic Yamhill County crisis line, and I, I don't say basic because they're, they're pretty amazing, but um, people can always call our crisis line here in Yamhill County if they're feeling suicidal or like they need help. And are those, is that crisis line, is that 24 hours a day? 24 hours a day, yeah, yeah. Wow. And those are the same folks that you might, you know, meet in the hospital if you're feeling suicidal and they're, they're out there doing the work 24 seven right now. So there's a lot of issues that face LGBTQ folks, um, homelessness, addiction. Tell us about the, that intersectionality. Yeah, so I mean, before any of this COVID stuff happened, you know, LGBTQ people already have a disproportionately hard time with most things. So if we look at suicide rates for LGBTQ kids, LGBTQ kids are five times as likely to attempt suicide than their straight peers. Um, and, you know, I always say that alone is a public health crisis. And that's before any of this happened. So we have a community that wants to die more. Um, and then, you know, no surprise, also use drugs and alcohol more. So it's almost up to three times the rate for drug and alcohol mm -hmm. use for LGBTQ people. So we have folks who don't really want to be alive, but since they are alive, you know, there's a way to cope with it with drugs and alcohol. Um, one of the other issues that our community faces so bad is homelessness, which is really being uh, exacer exacerbated right now with COVID. So the statistic about homelessness is pretty wild. LGBTQ youth are 120% more likely to be homeless, um, heterosexual kids. So we have all these kids on the streets because they've been kicked out of their homes or you know whatever it was, um, and now they have nowhere to go. Those are some of the worst problems that we have right now. So you talked about there's a lot of support, um, maybe, Rural areas are something you've been called to to help with more support. Um, so people are watching the show. They're thinking, I'd like to be of support. Um, I guess awareness of what we're doing right now, talking about these issues. Um, what would you say to folks that are saying to themselves, wow, this really is a something, but I'm, I'm trapped in my home right now. <laughs> you know, what, what can I do? And maybe that's just too hard of a question. But, uh, what have it's you got? a super, it's a super hard question. We're just figuring out the answers as we, as we go along. And I think mm -hmm. post COVID it's, it's easier to come up with solutions, right? Like maybe we start a closet for free clothes for LGBTQ people here in Yamhill County, because uh, people in this county struggle affording clothes in general, you know, much the less clothes that affirm their gender. You know, how are we going to find a size 13 high heel uh, if we can barely afford like a jacket? Um, yeah. And post COVID, I would love to see a clothing closet set up here. We've got a bunch of them in Portland. Um, I'd love to see one in Yamhill County. And I'd love to see more people coming out to the groups that already exist, the one in Bill. In P flag Newburg, but for now, I, I think it's got to be online. And I wonder if there's a way that locally we can create an online support group for LGBTQ kids in Yamhill County, especially, um, but also adults. So, I'm, you know, that's kind of my thought is maybe somehow as a community we create some space online for locals to connect. And also, it, you know, if people, kids that have friends that are lgbtq can those kids check on their friends like how are they doing is there a way you can support what do they need that kind of stuff all right well i think we're all um kind of uh, paralyzed right now kind of kind of the economy our our travels our ability to act is really quite reduced um and the fact that that's helped you know, holding up so much, your work in, included, it must be somewhat um, frustrating. Um, but in a few months, hopefully, <laughs> we'll be able to come out and uh, be more active on these issues. Well, I'm grateful for you, Paige, that you are a resource and that you are available and doing what you can to help the uh the the youth the adults in our county that need it 
And I hope you've made a difference by being on the show today. And um, we'll talk again. Yes, that's All right. good. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.